Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 13 of KSP Road to Exploration, and we're picking up, picking up uh, from my mean cliffhanger where I left you wondering if my Kerbal would get home. Now, I have figured out something that should indeed work. It's pretty much the exact amount of Delta V I have. It involves a uh, kick off the moon, and it gets me home in 14 days. I believe it's 14. Uh, I, I know that it's less, it's, uh, less time than my life support will support. Basically, it's the right amount of time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we're just gonna ignite our little tiny mini aero spike, which I've been using a lot um, for these kind of missions, because it's really efficient, and it's from the stock extension. It might be a bit cheaty, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so we're just gonna kick ourselves down towards the planet uh, with the, yeah, you can see the kind of moon sling there. We don't get too close to the moon, but it uh, gives us just enough of a kick that we uh, will get back and quickly because we won't be, be you know, being moved around the moon too much. And yeah, <clears throat> ah, yeah, my throat's all messed up. Uh, yeah, and uh, now we're just going to kick it down. I've sped it up because I spend quite a lot of time just kind of very finely tweaking this, um, although I probably should have just burned the whole way because it uses all of my fuel and I've been apparently a tiny bit inefficient because I uh, lose about a third of a meter per second delta V. I know, I am terrible. Anyway, so let's uh, warp down there. Uh, however, Minmus decides to pay us another. Vi oh, damn! I spoiled it. But yeah, basically, uh, yeah. As I warp, Minmus decides to pay me another visit. A nice little visit involving a little bit of gravity, a little bit of acceleration, apparently to the prograde. Um, and yeah, and that puts me in a bad position. And now my periapse is way out of the atmosphere. So I've cut through a couple of things and. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out and push because I hate getting out and pushing because it feels kind of cheaty. But the fact that it takes so goddamn long means that it's okay, and that's why you build very small craft. Uh, so yeah, um, this took quite a while, so I will cut through it, uh, especially because this can't hold it, the spacecraft can't hold its position without a Kerbal inside it. So I have to get in every now and again, reorientate it, and all of that crap. Um, what I should probably have done is just kept pushing it while it was spinning, but then it, you know, becomes impossible to get back in your capsule and things. It's, uh, yeah, not, not great. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I do a lot of this, um, and it takes a while. But anyway, here we go, the final push, which was about ten minutes later, and my, uh, periaps is back inside the atmosphere. So this mission has been just hounded with flaws. I finally got back, and Minmus screwed me over. And it always tells me that I'm running out of food when I have two days left, which is more than enough. Uh, so yeah, and yeah, you can see it just kind of almost pretty much gives me a radial burn, uh, the equivalent of a radial burn using the moon right there. And we uh, just grab the life support just in case we run out of oxygen on descent, which seems very unlikely, but might as well. Uh, ditch that and prepare to go into the atmosphere. Um, because, well, today we did not go gentle into that good night. We fought with everything we had to get our freaking spacecraft home. And it's coming home. Finally. We're not going to die, probably. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to die. It's fine. This capsule can land, probably. No, it will. Uh, there we go. There goes the chute. And everything is good and right with the world. We got back. And it's it's all good. It's all good. It's all, it's all great. Take a uh, surface sample and then recover this. And then, yeah, just uh, upgrade our mission control center, actually. I've been meaning to do this for a while, and I'm finally upgrading the mission control center so I can have as many missions as I want, so I can just go crazy, which I kind of do. Anyway, space station. This is um, the... I think this is the Ares spacecraft. My uh, spacecraft I've designed for go taking Kerbals to the space station. And you may be wondering, there's only two Kerbals in there, but it's a three-man pod. That's because this is not... Um, permanently bound for the space station. Oh, and here, uh, this little tank here is for uh, doing a re-entry burn, for reusing this lower stage. That's just what was happening there. But yeah, we have a Kerbal to rescue around the moon. Now this is... Oh, just got rid of the launch escape system. Um, there's too much stuff happening in this, and I should probably... I'll, I'll talk about the mission later. But anyway, here I fight to gain control... Well, to be able to um, put the fuel in there, do a deorbit burn, and then power on to orbit. And we will hopefully land that rocket in the um, ocean. Now that's a slightly different rocket. Uh, it's much bigger. It uses five LWT-45 engines instead of um, the skipper engine I've been quite 
partial to using recently, which uh, gives uh, quite a lot more thrust, and I'm thinking I might upgrade it at some point because it's a tiny bit under-thrusted, but yeah, it is a very useful rocket and also could be quite good for landing propulsively. But anyway, um, it is much heavier than the old one, the old stage I'd use, which was shorter and used a poodle engine, so I, the four parachutes hopefully will be enough to slow it down, but I'm not sure. So let's just pull the chutes. Well, I, this has maybe been a bit sped through, and then something happened and I had to pause. But uh, yeah, uh, here we go. It, the, the chutes pull, it seems good, and uh, we should land on the ocean, but we are coming in kind of hard, and it smashes most of the rocket. We do get some of it back, but we should really work on maybe just putting a few more parachutes on there. Uh, so yeah, anyway, let's uh, switch over to our spacecraft and power on to the space station. Uh, so... Before all of that craziness happened, I forgot how just eventful that launch was. Sorry, I got all confused. Yeah, anyway, before all of that, I was explaining what this mission was. Now, I have to go to the moon to rescue a Kerbal, but this is not a moon-capable vehicle. Uh, so, I'm going to go to the space station and refuel, because part of the mission of that space station was to put a lot of fuel in orbit, and at first I was like, oh, this is going to be so annoying, but it's actually really useful, so... Um, we're actually saving money on this mission right here by using the space station for fuel, because we can just take our normal rocket, and this is not what this craft is designed for, it's definitely not designed for doing moon missions, but I thought I might give it a test run on its versatility, because it could become a general purpose vehicle, um, although I'd prefer to design something different for that, but this isn't supposed to still have its second stage at this point, it should have separated and just switched to RCS, but obviously I need to keep the second stage around for this mission. Anyway, we're just dropping down on top of the space station right now with a really nice shot of just Kerbin on the side, and ah, oh, and then I've left it all sped up so it's because my dockings take a long time because I do them very slowly because I like doing them slowly um, because realism I guess although not that realistic because the Soyuz docks are like two inches per second and I usually dock at like 0.2 meters a second. Anyway, so let's just um, get some uh, RCS and some fuel. Um, there's a lot more RCS in that service bay. There's like uh, life support and RCS right now in the service bay of the spacecraft. I didn't bother topping up all the RCS because I just won't need it. Um, I probably shouldn't have even used that. I should pro pro probably have left it on the station, but I didn't. Anyway, so we've got all our fuel now, and now it's time to leave. Um, that was just a very quick stop, actually. I was uh, impressed at how quickly I did that. That was just one burn to get close and then moved in. Uh, yeah. That was, uh, I, I hardly even noticed it happening, as as with a lot of things I do in this series. I'm just talking about random stuff. But anyway, yep, time to go to the moon. And this second stage is capable enough of taking us to the moon once fully fueled, which is nice. So I could actually just use this spacecraft much like this, but I would really like this to not have the uh, second stage when it's docked to the space station, uh, usually. And I'll design a different vehicle for going to the moon more frequently. Um, and Minmus, because I've got to put a station in orbit of Minmus. Uh, someone actually did suggest that I should put, also put a station in orbit of Duna for making missions easier. That is an actual, actually not a bad idea, um, except I would very much like... Um, uh, I, 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 I would just very much like... Um, what was I going to say? I've totally forgotten what I was going to say. Oh yeah, I, I, there's a lot of other um, other options, like a cycler, which is actually quite a good idea, um, or something more akin to the Hermes. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it, I don't know why I was saying I would very much like, but um, yeah, I, I would quite like to do a, a cycler stage actually, but a, a cycler is quite difficult to do because it kind of keeps going between Earth and uh, Kerbin and uh, Kerbin and, du Kerbin and Duna quite quickly, so I'm not sure how possible that would be, but maybe, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I guess I'll look into it. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we've got to um, link up with our with our uh, astronaut, who hopefully is like an engineer or a scientist, because we kind of need more engineers and scientists. Now that we have multi-crew spacecraft, would be quite useful. Although, they're saying that this is my first multi-crew spacecraft. Um, so yeah, anyway, I've got to do a slight retrograde burn, and then another orbit, so that we kind of... Um, Sync up with our with our target and rescue him and get another free um, free Kerbal. That's the main reason I do these. I mean, they pay quite well and it is kind of interesting, but um, just you just get free Kerbals, which are really expensive right now. They're like 200 grand for another Kerbal, so I'm just going to keep rescuing them. There is also one in orbit of Kerbin I've sort of forgotten about, and that would be really easy to rescue with this kind of mission because I wouldn't even have to refuel. I could just take my spacecraft out. So uh, I might get on that, actually. Um, I might crew up the space station and then also go and fetch that guy, put him on the space station, and then when I when I bring the crew back, um, they'll well they'll they'll get a bunch of bunch of money, uh, but a bunch of extra money which will help support the space station, which really does need some supporting because it's way overpriced. Anyway, um, 
we've got ourselves our Kerbal here, and he's just gonna fly around and get into our spacecraft. We also got a got a world first milestone for um uh, for rendezvousing around Kerb uh, around the moon, which apparently I haven't done yet, which is which is great, perfect. Uh, yeah, and then like stuff telling us that we you know got our, uh, got our, another crew in our in our roster and things. Anyways, I'm just gonna take this right back to Kerb, and not staying at the space station. It was just a bit of a pit stop. Uh, which is pretty much how I'm probably going to use that, and then hopefully eventually build a much bigger station, um, and then use that for just really big missions. I kind of want to make this all just as reusable as possible, because it kind of makes sense. Uh, so yeah, let's head on to Kerbin, or head down to Kerbin. Although there isn't really a down in space, we just kind of pick a down. And, I mean, well, yeah, I guess if we're heading towards Kerbin, it can be down. Because it's relative to... I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just, just like the ramblings of a madman. I'm just going to take a sip of water, as I am wont to do in many of these videos. Yeah, my mouth is getting weirdly dry recently. I blame, as I have often said, London water, because it's hard water and... Uh. Anyway, so let's ditch that stage and point this the right way before it heats up, which it almost did. And the uh, the second stage and the spacecraft stay like right next to each other for ages. I thought it was fun. I switched on the RCS just because it was kind of looks fun and it'll help maintain um, the, our orientation since at uh, like hypersonic speeds this isn't actually aerodynamically stable, which is a problem. But yeah, you can also imagine that uh, since I'm taking the service bay back, I can take small things back from the station, so maybe like scientific experiments or just just like probes or I don't know it could just be quite useful this is going to be my general purpose kind of workhorse spacecraft and it'll be much better once I've um, sorted out uh, getting the uh, second stage the uh, first and second stages to land because um, then it'll be pretty much fully reusable other than like the launch escape system yes and this also has a launch escape system which I didn't mention um, that was earlier in the video you probably saw it We're so uh, it can rescue the crew if something is to go wrong uh, but yeah, uh, it's about a thirty thousand uh, dollars, thirty thousand fun spacecraft. But I could probably get it down to like ten with reusability. Um, oh, probably way way less because that that was eight thousand just for the capsule and the stuff. Yeah, and we also got uh, our crew and uh, our new crew, and he advanced a level, which is good. And eighty grand, hell yeah. Anyway, we need to go to the moon. We haven't been to the moon in a while, and I would really love it if um, yeah, if. If we could have some more science, but I haven't done much science research. Well, I haven't done much research in a while. And we're using my new rocket. Yes, this is going to be my work class rocket. The last one was fine, but this one's just a little better. This can go to the moon. It doesn't have to take solid rocket boosters, um, and it's just generally better. It's using the same top stage and lander, it's just a better second stage. And that fairing between the decoupler and the first stage, that's obviously just the reusability stuff. Um, yeah, I battling with this to try and get control, and then just flick the uh, flick the engine on, do a deal, but burn. That second stage now has six parachutes, um, which will hopefully be enough to land it. It still only has forty five units of fuel. I might upgrade that at some point when I upgrade the thrust, um, because I think I might replace two of the LVT forty fives with with LV. T40s or LVT30s, yeah, the ones that don't gimbal. They're the engines that don't gimbal, and they have a much higher thrust at sea level. They have a slightly higher thrust overall than the LVT45s, but at sea level they have a really high thrust compared to um, like like 50% more or something, something like that, maybe 40% more. Anyway, yeah, we're coming back down now, and it's actually looking pretty good. We're going relatively slowly, and uh, we're getting in position to pull the chutes, and there's six chutes that go away, and... Uh, Let's just hope that these these go well. Anyway, the spacecraft is. I've gotten into putting the spacecraft on a very um, long trajectory uh, now, so that I have time to land the stage. I'm really trying to nail down this thing without having a mod that helps me because I, I don't know when I when I get something in my head and then I'm like, oh, there's a mod that can help me. I feel like that's cheating for me because that's just like skipping over the challenge. Anyway, we get that back. I sorry, I totally didn't see how much I saved, uh, how much money I got back, but I think it may have been over ten grand. But yeah, I'm really happy with that uh, kind of. Uh, that rocket I've been using, it's nice with the five engines. I'm um, kind of like the Falcon 5, which never came to fruition. It was the um, uh, SpaceX's uh, kind of second rocket, well, sort of theoretical second rocket. They were going to use the Falcon 5 after the Falcon 1, which had five engines, you know, funnily enough, um, and could take about four tons of payload to orbit, but they kind of needed something a little bigger. So they built the Falcon 9, which is much better. Shame about, there was no real demand for the Falcon 1, which is a shame, because it was like a 12, it was, 
a 6 to 12 million dollar rocket, which is unbelievably cheap. And yes, it only took maybe like a little under a ton to orbit, but for small scientific payloads, it could have been so good, but they could only really get like three a year, and it was only, they weren't making a ton of money off it, so yeah. But anyway, you can get like a cheap flight as a secondary payload on the um, Falcon 9, so yeah. And the Falcon Heavy should be launching this year. Ugh, I'm so looking forward to SpaceX stuff. Just... Ugh, just nobody else has a chance at doing business in space agencies anymore. Anyway, here we are at the moon. Um, and I wanted to land in this crater, but I realized it's kind of going to be on the, in the dark, probably, by the time I get around there. So I decide this crater I hadn't really seen on just in center screen right now, I'm going to land there instead. Uh, I'm just, yeah. Basically, I like that it's got lots of craters. It makes it really easy to pick out landmarks, because there's the highlands, the midlands, the poles, and then just a bunch of craters. Um, and craters are obviously quite an interesting subject, because a crater has to have been created by something. Probably, not always. I mean, I imagine you, there is a situation in which you get a naturally occurring kind of crater mountain formation. It's very unlikely, but it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, it will be quite interesting to study craters, because if you can study what made this crater, then that's just very interesting, because you could find out compositions of maybe asteroids, maybe very smart people. I don't know a ton about this, but... Uh, you know, you could probably find out about things that collided with it, and they might tell you about, you know, the early solar system and things. That would be very... I'm I, I'm sure that would have a lot of scientific merit. Uh, anyway, so yeah, we're just taking our landing relatively slow. I, thought, I actually um, have slightly less Delta V on this spacecraft now, because yes, the new lower stage is much better than the second, the old lower stage with the, with the skipper engine, but um, I don't carry solid rocket boosters anymore, so I do have slightly less Delta V, but this uh, spacecraft has always had, like, way too much Delta V, so, yeah, I just took this landing relatively well, I mean, I, I, I slowed down uh, not that high above the surface, I think it was about a kilometer, a kilometer and a half, and then just eased myself down, as long as I have about, above about 850 meters of Delta V, I'll be fine. Um, yeah, so we're just going to grab all the scientific reports. I've left this all sped up, because you have seen a lot of these missions now, but obviously I'm not just going to not put this in. Uh, and yeah, so we're just going to land, uh, take our EVA reports and our surface samples, plant our flag, say something about just the, where we landed so we can, you know, know in the future, and then obviously write down the craft and the crew. Uh, Callisto 9 is what this is. It's a, pretty much, ex I think it's exactly the same as Callisto 8. And Oh no, Callisto 8 was the one that started the episode that almost got lost. It's Callisto 7 then. But anyway, yeah, so let's uh, just go, you know. I, I usually like spend more time on the moon just to make it slightly more, you know, like realistic or something, but this was just a science mining thing. Um, the moon is pretty much my science mine right now. I know it would be easier to do Minmus, but I have better plans for Minmus. Um, I think I could make that a very, very cheap and efficient science mine, uh, especially if I could figure out how to mine fuel quite soon. Uh, yeah, so I am, you can see I have uh, not got a ton of Delta V, I'd usually have quite a lot more by now, but um, it's basically because I had to do quite a lot of the uh, burn to the moon earlier with the with the lander engine, but it's fine because I have enough Delta V, it's just, uh, you know, always nice to have a lot more Delta V than you need, but I actually do end up with just like quite a lot. This this mission does go well. I'm, I'm not going to leave you on a cliffhanger this time. Uh, yeah, and uh, Scatterer does make the uh, kind of divide between light and dark on the moon really beautiful. On the moon, on the on the earth, I think. On the cur on the Kerbin. Kerbin, damn it! What are we? I've been saying earth instead of Kerbin a lot recently. Anyway, so let's just uh, head home. Tell everybody about what we found in those craters, of all the asteroids that have hit it and things, and that little triangle that was trying to shoot the asteroids, but he wasn't good enough. <clears throat> it's an uh, old game reference for you kids. Uh, I assume everybody knows about the game Asteroids. I don't know, I mean, I, well yeah, it's in films and shit, so. Um, not that I was old enough to actually play that as a game. So I d don't know why I'm being so high and mighty. Anyway, we leave the moon, and we have quite a lot of fuel left. Uh, well, not that much fuel. We have, like, six units of fuel left. But uh, I think I had, like, 60 minutes a second Delta V left, which is the important thing. So, yeah, this more than does the job. Um, 60 minutes of Delta v 60 minutes a second of Delta V is quite a large margin. Anyway, so just hit the atmosphere, slow down, land on curve, and do lots of science. And, uh, you know... Get ready to say that uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I uh, hope you're looking forward to future episodes where I will build stations and do minimus trips for like a dollar and all that stuff. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I will see you next time.